okay so uh, when we are going to discuss about like why why uh, no why should i go with how do why can't or some, something else or why can't i stay with an existing one so uh, to understand why it is the very first thing is we should understand how the current system is working so we are going to understand how the current system is working instead of hadoop then we'll try to see the limitations of that existing system then we will try to understand what is the hadoop or how it will work and how it is better than an existing system or and what are the components are there in hadoop system and what is the architecture changes in hadoop system we are going to see as part of the session today okay let's try to understand the very first thing is uh, i'll just make you very comfortable uh, don't worry uh, if you get any a small doubt even you don't know very very small doubt even if i sub let's assume that i have written here i'm going to write something like i'm going to write something like here analytics okay even if you didn't understand what is this analytics why should i why i have written analytics here please go ahead and raise your, your question stop me i don't mind if you stop me in middle don't wait till i complete the session or don't wait till i don't know uh, the uh, till last moment we really do not have anything like a question and answers whenever you got a question just go ahead and ask just get clarify that okay even whatever how small it is i really don't mind it okay even if you didn't understand a plus b or a minus b uh, that much small also really not to worry go ahead and raise it question okay because since we are in a learning phase everything is new for us right okay let's try to understand uh, let me ask a few questions uh, before starting this session and i would like to understand from you guys what is the analytics what is the analytics how important is that what is the analysis anyone please go ahead guys what is analytics what is analytics uh, it's analysis of data ruby okay what is the use of it uh to going through the data and for taking the business decisions so we need the analysis it is it is to get a picture to get a story or to get something uh, from your data okay and you can use story in, a, in any which manner you want okay anyone else any other definitions okay analytics are i uh, let me put in very simple way analytics are some numbers some results from some process the results will help you to improve your business the results will help you to take a new decision the results will help you to take a new step new step into new step into either in your business or you know, to improve whatever it is it's not only a business whatever it is uh, it can be our you uh, know it can be your your life decision it can be your business decision it can be your family decision whatever it is you are analyzing something what you are analyzing we are analyzing the data what is data anything is a data your past experience is a data your past interviews are ex data you are storing something in your mobile so like contacts or photos or videos or audios whatever it is they are data right what we do we'll go through the data we'll understand the data we we'll understand the situation then we will get to some conclusion we'll get some numbers out of a big uh, big scenario or big scene or big up uh, from the past or streaming information we will get the small uh, no, small numbers or small uh, uh, what you call uh, results by using those results we will take a decisions that is called analysis analysis and will that's called analytics the results are will call as analytics so uh, is that hadoop brought the analytics or is already there or hadoop or big data brought the analytics is already there it's already there it's already there it's already exists from so many years right right what how how that anal analytics are getting you know analyzed how that analytics are uh, you know 
getting analyzed from the the old days how the statistics by using some, yeah by using some yeah. process right by using some process or uh, they are using some you know uh, existing process we we'll, we can call that as a, a traditional process traditional approach traditional approach what is a traditional approach a traditional approach not only anything not only approach you just take a traditional what is a traditional what is a tradition let me put in simple way what is a tradition what is a tradition anything it, not to you know not to related it anything tradition what following is following some customs yeah following some customs it means our ancestors our ancestors with their environment with their comfort level with their circumstances calculating all those things they have prepared some set of rules and regulations they have prepared some set of rules and regulations we are following the same set of uh, rules and regulations that following the same set of regulations who created our ancestors that will call uh, tradition correct yes or no yes. that is a tradition it can be any tradition guys it can be any tradition it can be religious it can be something it can be something whatever it is so the, our ancestors uh, our ancestors what they have done by analyzing their environment by analyzing their available i mean their circumstances oh if we do this one it is a problem we should not do this so to avoid this they have created some set of rules and regulations right those rules and regulations we are following till right that 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 following call i mean that is that following or that uh, uh, where where we are going with the same that's called that's called traditional tradition right so here also we have something called in it also we have something called to get the analytics we have something called traditional approach traditional approach what is that that traditional approach in here to uh, to uh, to do the analytics or to uh, to get the analytics we have some traditional approach what is that our ancestors are 20 years or 30 years before before our seniors i can say we can call them as our seniors or we can call this our ancestors they have brought some uh, approach they have brought some approach to get the analytics that approach will call as a uh, you can say you can say it's a etl or you can say by using a dbms right so when we say traditional approach in the uh, traditional approach that can be we, we can say it's a rdbms we can say that's a rdbms let's look at here how the traditional approach works that we are going to talk about now traditional approach traditional approach traditional approach to get the analytics we have a, a already an existing approach is there how they are doing that so let's look at guys here so to get the analytics we should have an information we should have a data right so that data we will collect from sources we will collect from sources look at guys here we will collect from sources the boxes which i am drawing these are sources let's assume that these are sources they are sources i have you are watching our uh, chart also oh, oh, sorry could you please repeat chari uh, thing is are you watching our chart window Yes, yes, I am watching your chat window. Yes, I will. Okay. Sometimes I may miss. I'll go back and I'll watch. If any question is there, I will read out the question for everyone, and I will answer that. Yeah, I am okay. following. I am following your chat, uh, Chari. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Here, these boxes I will call as uh, sources. The sources can be anything, guys. The source can be anything. It can be. your financial institutes like a stock like a banks whatever it is whoever it is and this can be your social media this can be your crm or crm applications some application so i'm i'm saying that it can be some sensors it can be some satellite information so it can be your mobile as well some devices small devices whatever it is 
and it thing it can be anything it's, it can be physical it can be a program whatever it is who gives you a data that is a source to us who gives an information that is a source to us right so we'll collect the data from the sources we will collect the data from the sources we will collect the data from the sources this data is directly coming from the source it can be anything as i said it can be our financial institute it can be our social media it can be our crm applications it, ca it can be your legacy applications it can be uh, your devices it can be your mobile it can be your car it can be your laptop who whatever it is whatever it is who giving you information with the help to help you to improve your business or what you are interested and which data we're interested it can be anything it doesn't mean that we should have all these sources in our project no it can be either one source it can be two sources it can be three sources it can be any number of sources okay there is a possibility of having only one source okay so what they give they give data what type of data it is guys what type of data it is raw data it is a raw data it is a raw data why we are calling it a raw data this is not meaningful it is directly coming from the source it, it can be meaningful it cannot be a meaningful okay so what does it mean the data which is directly coming from the source is not going through any process phase it's directly coming it's not gone through any process so uh, it may contain the duplicates it may contain the different hexadecimals or different kind of formats it may contain the necessary and unnecessary data so it means it contains everything we really may not require everything from that in that data but it's directly coming from the source which will help for uh, it will help us i mean it it, will, it is helpful for us to get the actual information out of it let's take a simple example uh, we have a wheat we have a paddy we have if you take anything paddy means a uh, rice or no raw rice paddy paddy which comes directly from the fields right that is a raw right we really directly we cannot take that raw to you know we, we cannot cook and eat it what we will do so if you start cooking that it we cannot digest it the similarly if we start taking this raw data into consideration and we end up with uh, either creating a wrong results we end up with uh, either getting uh, no side effects right so for that we need to take through some process it's so like your wheat and your uh, paddy we have to take through them some mill some mill to remove the unnecessary information out of it to remove unnecessary information out of it so here so how this data i can take through some process the process i can call it as from this raw data i would like to take valuable information i would like to take only the necessary information to take the only necessary information we have to take through some process the process will call will call etl the process will call etl so to do the process as we have a a mill for a paddy as we have a mill for wheat as we have something uh, some process we have in the real time similarly we have some etl process for the etl process we have some div some softwares like uh, informatica abinitio tal and uh, there are different kind of uh, you know tools are available to do this etl process what this etl process what is the meaning of this etl the meaning of etl is e stands for extract the valuable information extract the valuable information and up, how to extract by applying some transformations by applying some transformations after applying the transformations we'll extract some data that data what we need to do load it somewhere load it somewhere load it somewhere this information where we will load where we will load we will load into some place some storage some storage some storage how we will load 
we will load in the form of tables why we need to load in the form of tables it's very simple guys if it is a data is in the tables it's easy to access because we have a beautiful tools to access the data from the tables we have a very beautiful to tools are there in the uh, market to access the data easily from the from the database i mean i can say from the tables so that that storage will call as a database that can be you can say database or data warehousing system so for time being you understand it's a data warehousing system and here i, I want you to have a, a little idea about what is a db versus data warehousing system and similarly i would like to you have an idea about oltp versus OLAP. Okay, this is quite important to understand this. Okay, so here uh, we'll apply the uh, transformations. We'll extract the valuable information. We'll load into the uh, uh, storage. Uh, uh, while doing these transformations, while doing this, we may apply normalization as well. What is the normalization? Removing the duplications. Simple terms. Remo removing the some uh, uh, removing the duplication. Redundancy. Reducing the redundancy. Okay, it has a different kind of normal forms are available uh, first normal form second normal form third normal form like that So they have some approaches to remove them. So we're really not interested at this point of time We really we are not really interested in the uh, traditional approach We are trying to understand how the traditional approach is working based on that. We are going to decide it No, we're going to appreciate the hurdle. That's the reason so uh, it is loaded into data warehousing system once the data is available the process data is available in data warehousing system we what we will do we cannot from these tables we cannot get uh, actual analytics okay we we should have i mean we are the developers or we are the uh, technical persons we can understand oh this table is showing some information this is the meaning of it but the non-technical persons will be there who actually takes the business decisions who actually try to talk so try to go to the clients and they try to go and explain the things they will call as a business users or business clients right they really not understand the, they really not understand the the information which is there in the tables so we have to give them in the charts we have to give them in the reports either it can be what any any type of report it is right so to do that we do uh, we do have some more we do have some more uh, reporting tools or we do have some more processing part it's, don't consider this is a reporting tool. So not only not only the reporting tool. It can be a processing tool processing tool So what we will do here in the processing tool uh, we have a data here and we we have a processing here or a reporting here What we will do here from this we will start generate the reports We will start generate the reports What is the use of those reports? These reports will be useful for business users, business clients, data warehousing administrators, and whoever takes the business decisions, whoever it is. We will generate the reports. The reports will be used by these guys. To generate the report, I have to process this data, the data also which is stored in the data warehousing system. It can be used data. To process the data, I should have a better processor here. To process the data, I should have a better processor here. I should have a better process here to generate the report in a given time to, ge to generate a report in a given time so my client will say I want a report in five seconds that's a benchmark I want a report in 10 seconds that's a benchmark for him so he don't want to wait uh, no half an hour one hour two hours three hours of for the reporting or for the after processing the data he really don't want so this is how the data is getting processed and data, data is getting uh, no processed uh, using different uh, tools uh, in the uh, traditional approach Do you guys understand the traditional approach any questions here? Any questions? Okay, so this is looks very simple We're collecting the data from the different sources. We're applying some transformations and uh, we're extracting the valuable data from it and we are storing into some data storage and from there we are processing it and we are generating the reports. How it is happening? 
how it is happening it is collecting the data from the source so the source will be keep sending your data and will be applying your uh, etl process and once the data is available in the data warehousing system but once it, the data is available in the data warehousing system so that data will be stored into some uh, some storage from here we are started processing it so we need to more concentrate on this area guys we need to more concentrate on this area once the data is available in the data warehousing system to process it let's assume that i have a 100 gb data here this is just a storage right it is just a storage it's not a processor it's a storage machines and this is the processing machines this is a processing machine let's assume that i want to process this 100 gb data i want to process this 100 gb data to generate some reports or it can be TB of data, okay? It can be any size of the data. That data, I want to process it here. What I need to do? I need to pass this data from data warehousing system to a processing system through a network, and I will process it here. So initially, when you're when you're downloading the data from the uh, source, source in the sense this uh, data warehousing system, first it will go to hard disk. From hard disk, we need to load into RAM. Why should I load into RAM? Why should I load into RAM? What is the what is the purpose of the RAM here? Because the whole process will go in the RAM only. You take any device, you take any device, that device will have a RAM to process uh, data. You take your mobile, you take your laptop, you take your desktop, anything, anything, the data will get processed in the RAM. To achieve the speed, yes, we, we need a better RAM and we need a better processor as well. We need a better processor as well right so the data will load into the ram then it will start processing it and i applied my logic on this data which is available and the, the data will be processed and it will generate the reports it looks very simple right then what is the problem why can't i go with the same approach why should i go with the new approach which is called hadoop or whatever it is why so let's try to understand guys here one more time uh, i'm putting it very simple way we are collecting the data from the different sources we'll call uh, we'll call the data we'll call as a raw data and we're applying some transformations here and put storing the data into data storage and we are taking into processing engine where we are processing the data and we're generating the reports looks very very simple then what is the limitations here it looks very very simple then what is the limitations here so look at guys here what is the limitations i'll start explaining you here let's assume that this works very well when you have a less amount of the data this design has been given 30 years before or before that a decades before i can say a decades before that time that time their environment that time their circumstances that time the size of the data very less so with that data this approach was excellent with that less amount of the data this process these systems this architecture was really really good now let's assume that so my data is started my data is started growing my data is started growing my data started growing it became petabytes of the data petabytes of the data or exabytes of the data or etabytes of the data whatever it is the data is grown and the, the generation of the data is a very very fast it is generating the data like tbs of the data in a fraction of seconds let's assume that the multiple sources i'm getting the data terabytes of the data you know very fast i mean it means very frequently it is generating the so much amount of the data so the existing tools will not work or what i need to do i need to go with either better tools I need to go with the better tools or an existing tools i have to go with the more licenses more licenses i need to go with the more licenses and more systems i need to add in this process to get the thing so since it is a, it's not a open source we need to buy buy a license or we need to buy a better better processing system or better software that involves the cost that is involves the cost Okay, fine. I have invested some amount of money by buying the, some info, uh, so uh, useful tools. Then I started processing it. After started processing the data, the data started storing into a data warehouse. Since the storage was old one, we are storing the data in the same storage. Now the storage is full. I need to improve the storage. I need to improve the storage. So the storage, 
if you take if you go with uh, if you go with uh, traditional approach we have to improve it the storage into one second guys sorry i'm a little bad in the drawings oh it's looking very badly so to, to improve the storage is in if you go with a traditional approach we can store in a scale up approach we can do only scale up approach we cannot do in the scale out approach i'll i'll, def, I'll show you the what is the difference between the scale up and scale out approach so it, it means i need to improve my rdbms as well i need to improve my rdbms as well where the cost is involved where the cost is involved here also and fine i'm okay with the cost no problem i have invested money fine so now instead of 100 gb i have loaded the terabytes of the data tbs of the data i need to process the tbs of the data i need to i need to bring the tbs of the data to process the process the data started downloading the started that the data started downloading so if the data is moving from one place to another place let's assume that my data warehousing system or my data storage cluster or my data center is there in us I am processing from India or from anywhere okay from anywhere so now the data has to travel through network so there really no matter geographical location since we are in the same network we will be in the same network really it not matter but the distance is very very limited impact on this distance is really not that much great impact the little important impact will be there so we are what we are doing here we started downloading the data we started moving the data from the storage to processing engine to to move the data let's assume that to to i'm um, to load the data terabytes of the data or uh, some gbs of the data it took two minutes and uh, after i have written some logic to process it and the process is started processing the data what are the data loaded the process it took it took another one minute of time to process it total three minutes so total three minutes to 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 process the data which is there in the uh, it is there in the source is there in the us or some other location into the some other location some other missions it took three minutes to process and it took three minutes to generate a report and our client will not at all be happy because his benchmark was 10 seconds as we talked before but his benchmark was five seconds as we talked before right it is time consuming process It is time consuming process. The second limitation is time consuming process. It's a time consuming process. Right? Why it is time consuming process? Anyone tell me? The data is getting moved. The data is getting moved from one location to another location through a network. Moving data from one disk to another disk is the costliest operation moving the data from one location to another location or moving data from one disk to another disk is costly to operation if you are not moving the data let's assume that your data is not moving you can achieve the same same uh, with the same infrastructure if you're not moving the data you are processing the data you can process that in one minute how it is instead of downloading the data you send your logic to the data you send your logic to the data wherever whatever the logic you have written you have you might your whole project might be in 100 mb or 200 mb whatever the day whatever the size of your project code whatever the size of your project code send that 100 mb or send that 200 mb to wherever the data resides it's called upload your data upload your logic upload logic don't download data instead of downloading the data you upload your logic to a, wherever the data resides and process it and take the data and take the results that will reduce a lot of time so one minute one minute right it means it is taking so much of time i mean it's taking the sense the downloading is taking so much of time and processing is taking less time so to, to if you avoid the downloading we can achieve the performance or we can uh, we can process it in a one minute we can process in a one minute right so what it is called this is called data localization the the traditional approach has a code, code localization we'll talk about that in the traditional approach we do not have a data localization
why data localization is more important very simple guys i want to take a simple example which i which i used to explain in the other sessions as well the simple example is let's assume that today uh, today is a weekend right and you decide to go to uh, your stores to buy some groceries to your home and what you what you did uh, you got up in the early you got ready and in the same day there is a cricket match is playing which is your favorite not only cricket it can be anything some some your interesting program is playing in our uh, telecasting and uh, some other work also there what you will do you will sacrifice something and you will go to a store right to go to a store you have to travel through towards it in the traffic you may spend uh, an half an hour in the in the travel you store you reach the store you have picked out the, all the items whatever you need and you again you went to the counter the since it is a weekend everyone will be in the in the store i mean every every it person or everyone who has a weekend so they also uh, want to buy right so you'll be in the queue again the queue has taken 10 minutes or 5 to 10 minutes after that the billing and again you have packed it and you're, you're coming back in the same topic again another half an hour or one hour you are reaching home right it means often over there often over in the store and often over in the return back uh, almost you are spending one and a half hour to two hours for the, the, uh, in, the in the in the right in the uh, travel and uh, to get the groceries instead of that instead of that a simple approach is that sit at home only take your phone call to the store call to the store give the order what are the items you want they'll get de de delivered in 30 minutes to 45 minutes what are the timeline they commit it means you are saving a lot of time yes or no you're saving a lot of time yes or no so forget about that we'll go out or we'll chill out and all those things forget about them but you you you, you concentrate on the performance or concentrate on the the purpose we're achieving it or not yes or no guys is a we go and buy is good or they get delivery is good Let's assume that there's a very good store. They will have a very good quality of items. We really not no need to pick the quality items. They will deliver the quality items. That let's assume that, which is good. They deliver is good. Right. We save a lot of time. We save a lot of time. Right. We really no need to travel across it. We need to save a lot of time. And also you can you can watch your favorite. Uh, no, whatever it is getting telecasted in the TV or whatever it is. You can spend your time for others, other other purpose. That is called customer localization. Customer localization. Wherever the customer is there, the service will go to the customer. Wherever the customer is there, the service will go to the customer. That's we'll call as a customer localization. Let's say, take a simple example. Today, let's assume that you want to attend the demo. Okay, I have conducted the demo in some other location, in Bangalore or some some location. Let's assume that it is a classroom demo. Let's assume that, and I have sent an invite to everyone. And everyone has to come to a class, and they have to travel across, you uh, know, the trough, I mean, across that city or to reach that location, right? They have to come, and they may spend more than. There are so many people who are traveling one hour or half an hour or forty-five minutes or two hours. They're traveling in the, uh, you know, in the roads, and they have to come towards the uh, the class, right? And they have come, and they'll sit, and they'll go back again. They'll spend another hour, half an hour or forty-five minutes of time. Almost they're spending a time two three hours or two hours in the in the traveling itself Instead of that you guys are sat at home only We connected each other there Whatever I'm explaining here you guys are able to see Except you are not able to see me except that I'd also make it you know if I make it a video It's also available Right everything so wherever you are there the service is coming to you Wherever you are there the service is coming to you that is called student localization that's called student localization. Do you guys understand what I'm trying to explain, guys? Which is better? You going to the classroom is better, or the the, the getting you know trained in the online is better? I mean, I'm 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 excluding other benefits. I'm just telling you a purpose, whether we are achieving the purpose or not. Yes or no? Sandeep, Srusti, Sub, Srinivas, Syed, Rama, guys. You guys understand, right? Which is better? Getting service wherever the customer resides. Getting deliver wherever the customer resides. Right? And here, if you see, getting process the data wherever it resides is better. It's reducing a lot of time. 
right so that's called data localization the old approach was a code localization wherever the code was there the data used to move towards the code there, it means in the traditional approach we do not have a data localization we have to move the data and next why it is the data localization I mean let, let's assume that so one is it is taking so much of time one is a no data localization other one is yeah correct sorry so other one is other one is it is processing in a single machine it is processing it is a sequential process it is sequential process it is not a distributed so the data is not a distributed even though you may say that sir i have seen that there are some people who created a mysql cluster where they are distributing the data across the multiple missions but that is not a fully distribution that is not a fully distribution even the facebook was doing that before even uh, ebay was doing that before they were using mysql instances in the multiple missions and they were storing the part of the data into uh, different missions and they are maintaining some cache missions for references or indexing missions i can say for uh, the to refer that where the data resides what so that managing that type of clusters are very very highly difficult i can say managing the type of clusters are highly difficult i hope you guys understand right so it means the data is we do not have a no distributed data is not distributed and next so since data is not distributed no parallel process what is the advantage of the parallel process we can get it done the same work i mean uh, go, we get it done the work with the multiple parallel people let's say i want to construct a house if one person started constructing he will end up with a, uh, you know constructing house in uh, after so many days i have seen a person who constructed yeah uh, i have seen a person who constructed a, a, a single bedroom some I mean three houses a three in the three houses in the row a single person is constructed single person only with the help of another person i think uh, occasionally he he single person is constructed a house in my area uh, where my village i can say so it means it's he took so much so many days if the, the if he if he hired 10 people they could have finished it in very early right there is no parallel process here since we are loading the data in into uh, into a single mission and we're getting the data to a single mission processor if you have a parallel process you'll achieve the better time why no parallel process the data is not distributed let's take a simple example i have a file here i have a file here the file has to be processed by parallelly what i need to do i need to divide the file saying that hey you do this work this part of the day hey you do this part of the data we need to divide it divide and distribute it that, that's not available in existing system right uh, the next limitation is let's look at here let's look at here um, uh, i have started processing the data i have started processing the data i have i mean uh, i send a request the data is getting processed while processing uh, something happened the mission that the database is not available the data store uh, the data warehousing system is not available will the data get processed or fail will data get processed or fail let me repeat the question i started processing the data the the, the job is running while job is running one of the server is failed i mean the, the storage the data storage is failed will the job success or fail so the, the job will fail right why the job is failed since there is no source available right so instead of that yeah instead of that if i have a similar source in other mission similar source in other place if this is not available there will be someone who directly you come here oh this is this guy is not available no problem you don't worry i will direct to you here if i have such kind of thing if i have such kind of thing my job will success right 
take an example guys uh, a student and he has a two friends okay i mean he will be having so many friends uh, he didn't go to office let's take an example me okay office and, uh, and say school okay let's take an example me i have a couple of friends and who stays in the same area and i can say uh, same apartment okay uh, i know that those those guys will maintain the well notes i know that they will prepare very well notes their handwriting is really good i like them and i want to go and get the notes from them to take a backup uh, take a notes since i didn't attend the class so what i do i went to one person home the friend x okay i went to friend x well, his mom said the friend x is not available then if i i, I if I, I don't have any other friend what i have to do i have to come back i have to come back to home next day only i have to do something else because the the attempt is failed i went to my friend x he is not available that attempt is failed there is no use of that attempt i didn't get benefited with that attempt but i have one more friend i know him he is also maintain the similar kind of notes i know him he is also maintain the similar kind of notes he will also will have us well prepared or well structured notes from from his let's say he is in first of first floor uh, that other guy is st staying in the fifth floor what i will do in the same apartment i'll go to the fifth floor to other friend x or friend y right i will go and get notes from him i'll go and get notes from him if you, if you ask me even if a friend y is not available what you will do i will make a copy of other friend oh i i'll go to other friend home where i know that there is one more friend right it means my my job should not fail because of one resource is available or not available my request should not fail because of one person is not available yeah very good example chari so atms if one atm machine is not working we'll go for another atm for you know pick, uh, withdrawing the money right nearest atm yes yes good example chari right so how we are achieving that how we are achieving that with the replication data replication the data replication so since in a traditional approach where is my cursor yeah here there is no data replication when data re duplication automatic automatic there is no automatic and solving this problem with the replication is called fault to tolerant there is no auto fault tolerant no auto fault tolerant so and so on there are so many if you keep explaining that uh, there are so many other you uh, know limitations as well let's see here these are the limitations we see these are the limitations with the traditional approach why these limitation these limitations are occurred these limitations were not there before no these limitations were not there before all of a sudden why it is the limitations are initially when when i draw first time when i explain the very first time i said it's a very nice approach and all of a sudden i am started showing you so many limitations why why because data is growing because the data is grown this time the data is huge when they designed this approach the time the data was less when they designed this approach the data was less so with their circumstances with their you uh, know environment with the, their availability of the data they have created that approach but that the same approach now started giving you some limitations who is causing that problem who is causing that problem a limitations can i say data can i say big data can i say big data is there no guys can i say big data what is a big data use volume of data okay huge volume of the data it is a problem which was unable to handle our traditional approach uh, sorry rama could you please repeat it is a problem in which we were unable to handle by using our traditional approach yeah, i'll come to you yeah huge amount of data 
huge amount of the data so how much huge a uh, suban chari how much huge Hundred GB, one petabyte. It depends on the context of or one TB. Is there any measurement like if I have this much data only, if I have greater than this much, greater than one TB or greater than hundred GB, then only I'll call it as a big data. Is there such kind of limitation or is there such kind of uh, uh, you know what you say boundary? Right? No, it depends on the context, right? Yeah. Depends on the context. Very good. Okay. So when I don't have a measurement like this, Ravi, you are telling that I don't, you don't have such kind of limit. You don't have such kind of thing. Can I say 100 MB is the big data? Can I say 100 MB is the big data? It depends upon the software, Ravi. Exactly. Yes, I can say 100 MB is a big data. Depends on who is processing suppose, this. If you, depends on uh, if who is go processing go. this. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm explaining that, Rama. Right? So it depends on what process you are using to process this data. Let's assume that, take simple example, we have an email applications. We cannot send 100 MB data through an email. We cannot send 100 MB through an email. We have to store in drive or somewhere or even you, you can say that sir today these days I'm, I'm able to do that how you are able to do through drive google drive that's a different story right so for email application the 100 mb is a big data what i'm trying to say here the size is not only the constraint size is the not only the constraint right it can be anything else so it's totally depends it's a totally depends on the processor who is not able to process a data in a given time who is not able to process a data in a given time you you may say that sir i can send 100 mb data through an email by chunking into pieces by chunking into pieces i'll send the one multiple emails to you anyway you are, you are getting 100 mb data right at the end but time taking time taking it means Whatever the data, whatever the machine, whatever the data is not able to process by an existing system in a given time. I'm repeating the same statement, guys. Whatever the data is not able to process by an existing system in given time, that data for that process, we can call a big data. Size is not only the factor, there are some other characteristics. Do you guys understand what is the big data? A big data is a data which is not able to process by a given uh, uh, which is not able to process uh, process or managed by an existing system in a given time that data i can call as a big data who has a size who has a, some other other characteristics i'm going to discuss now clear any doubt so far yeah, Ravi, i have few doubts you know. go ahead yeah, the first one you say like in traditional approach, there is no data replication, mm -hmm. but we do have rates and all right. So that is redundant error of independent tests. So okay. uh, we are actually uh, we are actually having replication in uh, well DP, right? Okay, so is it automatic replica? No, but yeah, it is not automatic. It is not by default. It will be happening. Yeah, we have to arrange that. You have to execute a job. You have to launch a job. Ideally, you're talking about a backup, right? Yes. So the the backup job will run either hourly basis or sometime, sometime, right? Yeah, there will be like backup disks. So that is right, right? So there will be different level of disks uh, which that, will be back. That, that's yeah. correct, uh, Sub. Okay, let me let me put in this way. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, it's a good question actually. I I I forgot to mention there. Let's say. I got a date at nine o'clock. Is the same copy will be available in other mission by nine o'clock or nine thirty? A backup mission will have a data by nine thirty or some other whenever the job runs. Yes or no? This is backup mission. This is the original copy. Now after loading the data, the data is available here. Then at the 9.30, we may run some job or 10 o'clock, we may run some job to get the data into this machine. Uh, this is as per my understanding, guys. Maybe maybe uh, there may be different approaches for that. 
uh, I, I may not be aware of that. Okay, what I understand, what I have seen my past experience, what I have seen my past experience, the data will come to the original disk or original uh, data storage, and from there they will run a backup job, and who takes the back data from here and will keep it to some other location for the for the uh, I can say the fault tolerance or whatever you call. But at 9:15 I have launched a job. 9:15 I launch a job here. The original data is available in this machine. I'm started processing in this machine. This machine goes down. But there is no mechanism of uh, uh, redirecting me to other machine. That approach is not even available now, I, I, as per my knowledge. And and this 9:30 machine, I mean the backup machine will not have a full up-to-date data. It was there till 9 o'clock only. I mean the previous batch or free previous execution. That data only available in this. There is no no up-to-date data in this. I may I may miss some you no know, uh, data. Understand, Sue? What I'm trying to say? Yeah. So it may not be that accurate. Uh, yeah, but uh, replication does exist. It may not be that accurate. Yeah. Yeah. So that is there. And uh, one more thing, like uh, if uh, traditional does traditional approach always means the OLTP uh, you are saying or online transaction processing. It can be OLTP, it can be OLAP, whatever it is. I'm talking about OLAP. See, we are talking about analytics, so obviously it is OLAP only. Yeah, because uh, actually big data, I don't think so it will be. It can uh, replace OLTP because uh, we don't have any. Uh, I mean, that is transition, and this is analytics, right? So, exactly. So when we are talking about yeah. analytics, as, as I said, it's OLAP only. Yes. Uh, as I said, uh, it is not replacement of OLTP. I'll show you that some of the tools who are actually not replacing, they're, they're also, uh, they also become like a OLTP. I'll also show you some tools and the latest versions. Now, there are so yeah, many. So yeah. tools, there, tools are so are OLTP, right? yeah, that, there are tools are there. Uh, you, you can see that there is something called Yaro database. Yaro. Uh, there are some other, you know, uh, I'll, there are some other things. I'll, I'll bring that to your, your notice. Any other question? Okay. So I think you have another question. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Anyone else, guys? Please go ahead. Don't hesitate to ask me. Okay. So, uh, yeah, what we were talking about? Yeah, that's data. So that is whatever the data is not able to process by. Uh, uh, an existing system in given time that data we can call as a big data and the data should have not size is not only the constraint there are another another uh, no, another uh, things called characteristics 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 are there for this data what are the characteristics so we may keep hearing that 3v there are not actually three V's more than that. We'll talk about them, and it's uh, as I'll explain six V here, six V's, and some other blocks or some other, even IBM says the ten V. There are they have some other V's also. They are, they are, they brought it. So let's see the uh, the six V's. The first V is volume, the size of the data. What we are talking about? Volume, the size of the data. How much data? How much data is getting processed? in by given approach i mean uh, how much data is, has to be processed the volume and velocity velocity how fast the data is getting generated how fast the data is getting generated how fast the data is getting generated this is more important there is an interrelation between these two let's assume that you have a cluster you have you have designed a cluster who handle 100 gb data okay let's assume that currently you are getting a, a 20 gb per day your cluster your cluster after uh, 20 uh, 20 gb per day after fifth day fifth day will achieve 100 gb 100 gb you can store it but let's assume that uh, 20 gb per day it became per day it started giving you 50 gb it means the the volume is increased the velocity the fast it was one of one day it was taking to generate a 20 gb now one day it is generating 50 gb there may be a chance the one day itself it can generate 100 gb the time, how t how much time it is taking to generate a uh, data that we'll call velocity. How fast the data is getting generated, and uh, variety. 
variety what type of data it is the variety means we can have a uh, three different type of data here structure we'll talk detail about later semi structure and unstructured unstructured the three type of data can be available structure means like your tables who has a proper structure table comma separated tab separated the whole data looks like a very easily to access the proper structure will be there semi structure means uh, when you look at the high level you may not have the proper structure but when you go little down that means one level do, low, low you may have one structure i'll give you an example unstructured like uh, your images audio video this kind of files will not be having any structure so your data may have any of this form your data may have any of this form right volume velocity variety and there is something called variability variability variable variability means the data will be changing variability means variable today i'm getting the structure data uh, tomorrow it may be it become the source may give some other variable it will be keep changing the type type of the data and there is something called veracity there is something called veracity uh, veracity is uh, stands for like how good the data is how accurate the data is how if, uh, how i mean how can i trust that that trust the source is the data is giving a, a good data how we accurate the data that characteristics represents that how accurate see uh, let's assume that let's let's take a simple example uh, we will be seeing the tweets and uh, in the facebook with the hashtags hashtags i have some hashtag like this as as you see this uh, this hashtag in your in the in the twitter or somewhere what you will get into your mind cricket match because you are a cricket lover some people may think it's a, it may be war it may be a business it may be something else right so how accurate the data is the totally depends on the data we process internal the i mean i am just taking an ex, you know uh, example how we accurate the data is how good the data is how trustworthy the data is and the other characteristics is wall value value the most important characteristic of uh, six ways uh, without having a without having any value there is no point of doing all these things right if let's assume that you are learning a uh, hadoop it's not adding any value to your profile it's not add any uh, adding any uh, value to your career is there any point to spend three months four months on learning the hadoop is there any point if it's not adding any value the value is the most most important the most important characteristic right so that's the reason value also one of the characteristics if i'm processing the data the data sh that should have some character so that should have some results clear guys these are the characteristics and we'll talk about the classification this uh, three uh, semi structure structure and our later point of time and what we have seen so far what we have seen so far just have a little recap we have seen traditional approach Uh, one second traditional approach to process the data and we have seen the limitations of it and we have seen the big data and it's the characteristics right still we not uh, talked about uh, hadoop we still not uh, talked about the hadoop it's just a uh, yeah so we we not talked about uh, we did not talked about the hadoop at we are going to talk yes radha i'm going to uh, explain you veracity one more time the veracity says that very simple way let me put in this way veracity says that veracity says that how accurate the data is how trustworthy the data is how good the data is is the data i'm getting the data from one source is that good data is it always giving you proper results there may be some sources will give you always a good data there may be some sources give you a mixed data there may be some sources will give you all fake data this also one characteristic these are all characteristics guys these are all characteristics it doesn't mean that they should have in a each data no no need to be no need to be these are characteristics understand radha yeah 
<clears throat> can you talk about an example a real life example where the veracity where you would uh, you asayat you are talking about a veracity uh, no no i'm talking about the entire stuff uh, after after the traditional approach uh, okay. this big stuff can you give a live um, example yeah sure i can give uh, that example where uh, we can look at these things yeah i, I we can i, I can ex- give an example take simple uh, example is your uh, uh, twitter if you see earlier days uh, in the twitter or facebook they were using a, a old approach traditional approach and they are getting the lots of lots of lots of data they used to process it and you might have seen that there is something called trending have you seen the trending in your uh, uh, your facebook or twitter trending the trending will be keep changing every one hour or every two hours or every half an hour sometimes right how that getting changed how the trending is changed based on the data based on the data what they are trying to do they are trying to analyze in the background after analyzing that particular hour what is the trending like so let's say the based on the tweet the uh, let's uh, let's uh, talk a simple take a simple example um, um the uh, take indian politics okay indian politics so let's assume that the rahul gandhi is given a some speech about something okay and people are just so many people are talking about it let's assume that and modi is given some some tweet about something uh, it, it can be demonetization whatever it is and so the people are start talking about this thing in the first one hour um rahul gandhi or someone brought some topic uh, some issue and there were so many people are talking about it by hash, hashing the tags and that is a trending at that point of time at next uh, ram gopal verma we know it very well guy right that guy who frequently tweets in the twitter and who always makes the controversies right i mean is a meaningful controversy i can say so uh, that that guy started doing something and people are started talking about it Uh, let's take we are, we are seeing so many you uh, know uh, so many things in uh, intolerance there are so many things we are seeing right what's happening the based on the number of tweets based on the uh, size of the tweets or huge uh, volume of the tweets volume of the tweets velocity of the tweets variety of the tweets some people will be sending out pictures some people will be sending you uh, an structured information right some people will be the, the it's a variety it's a variable right they keep changing based on all this type of data it may be it may be accurate it may not be accurate right and based on that they are processing it by using a streaming uh, i'll i'll bring that later point of time the streaming process and they're getting the results based on that number how many tweets and how many are in this particular rover for this topic there may be so many topics one is the indian politics one is rahul gandhi one is a uh, narendra modi or something else one is something else hadoop or big data so based on the number of tweets for that topic they will make it as a trending in the, your in the right hand, in the right hand side uh, in, the, in the twitter or facebook you see there will be one column called twin uh, uh, trade trending sayed uh, uh, right right right, right? Yeah. so mm-hmm. that's how the data is getting processed but the trending was not there before I didn't see the trending, you know, uh, some years before. I really didn't rem- remember when the trending has come into the picture, but it was not there before. The best example. Not only that, you know, you can take any example. Let's say, uh, I mean, so many banking sectors are, you know, uh, are moving to big data. I mean, uh, Hadoop or Spark, whatever you call. A lot of uh, uh, automotive companies that are moving to a big data processing a stock stock market you can take a simple example of the stock market i i see the lot of banks uh, you can take any bank they started moving into uh, financial banks or you know investment banks they're moving to big data their projects their application they're moving to big data i have seen it am i answered your question sayed right 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 yeah okay but at this point of time i i know that uh, there are some uh, students who call me and ask me that uh, they want the whole structure i mean like uh, uh, architecture i can say the project architecture at this point of time i cannot show you an project architecture uh, since it's a confidential what i can do once we understand these concepts uh, once we understand the components then i'll i'll bring the architecture by removing the client names by removing the all these things 
I will show you how the real time works. The architecture can be same. The design can be same with the organizations. So, uh, I mean, it can be varied depends on their uh, use cases. But I can show you, uh, you know, uh, the uh, approaches, the architectures, which is, which is legal. It's really not illegal. Okay, that can be shown. But I really cannot show. Uh, I, I really cannot show the you know the clients. Let's say if you ask me what your client is doing, you show me an architecture of that. No, I cannot show that. So whatever the you know, since it is uh, illegal, it's not uh, you know, good. Okay, okay. Let's move to Hadoop, uh, guys. You, you guys has been muted due to some disturbance. If whenever you want to talk, you just unmute and talk. Okay. The first of one hour we discussed about uh, uh, the traditional approach and we discussed about uh, big data and we discussed about uh, things. Let's talk about uh, Hadoop. How Hadoop solves this problem? So we not seen. We have seen the problem. We have we have seen who is causing the problem. We are going to see a solution for it. We are going to see a solution for it. Uh, is it fine? I'm going to take another more hour. Is it fine with you, or you guys want a break? Even if a break is a quick break, it, it will be you no know, uh, hardly five to seven minutes or five to ten minutes. Do you guys want a break, or you want to continue? A uh, quick response is required, guys. Please quickly. Amar, Chari, Gaurav, Nataraj, uh, five minutes break, uh, Sterling by Syed, quick break, okay. As of now, three requests. Trending is they want a break. Continue, five minutes, continue, please, five minutes. Okay, let's take a five minutes quick break. Uh, come back into 8:20. Now it's 8:14 IST. Please come back in um, five minutes. Yeah, please be at 8:20. I'll be starting up 8:20. Don't know how to. Okay. How to? Okay. Thank you, guys. Please back by 8:20. Okay, by the time a break, you guys can introduce uh, introduce to me. Actually, I I, st I should start with my introduction. Uh, due to the lack of time, I didn't start it. Uh, you guys can see that you know traditional approach uh, limitation itself is taken more than hour. Okay, so uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, who are there? Who are available? Can you just ping me? Who are available here? Who didn't go for a break? Amar. Okay, next, who are all available? Gaurav, two. Sub, three. Uh, anyway, Sub, you know me, right? Okay. Three. Amrish, okay. Four. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, even Sushi is available. Hi, Sushi. Even you all aware me, right? Who am? Uh, guys, my name is Veera Ravi. Okay. Uh, I'm a Hadoop developer and Spark developer. I'm currently working for uh, uh, a company. Sorry to, you know, uh, I, I'm hiding my company name or client name as of now. I'm not going to uh, reveal that. I have total uh, 8.7 years of experience. In that uh, last four and a half year, I'm working on big data technologies. And before that, I was a Java developer. And I'm a passionate about uh, giving your trainings. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a personal trainer. And even I was a ho home tutor uh, when I was studying. Even I was a, a trainer for uh, judges on the laptop training. So it's, it's my passion, okay. And even it's not only passion, even I'm, I'm making money out of it. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm not, uh, I'm doing a charity or something. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I started doing this uh, training from so many, long, so many years uh, uh, because I was giving a. Uh, training on the mathematics I was giving a training on uh, the uh, students for the students like uh, seventh class seventh standard and tenth standard date uh, as a home tutor um, yeah this is my introduction I started giving a Java training as well and uh, started giving you Hadoop and you uh, know big data trainings uh, you can find the same videos uh, are available in the YouTube but YouTube I'll uh, you know, uh, uh, use very less because whenever I get a time I'll be uploading into that yeah these videos will be uploaded because this, uh, there are some requests from the people who wants to see these videos and I'll be uploading these videos with a date You guys can have a look 
uh, this is about myself uh, you guys can go uh, go ahead and introduce yourself uh, quickly i just want your name what is your current technology how many years of experience nothing else apart from that uh, go with alphabetical order from from amar start with you hello vida can you hear me yeah hello yes amar i am able to hear you vida i am working with pro technologies as a project engineer okay presently i am working as a system administrator just more mr okay and uh, experience and uh, i am interested in hadoop yeah, uh, m2 years of experience i mean two years of experience okay fine uh, next ambarish uh guys quickly finish it uh, because we need to start in 2 minutes amrish i am not we are not able to hear you uh, maybe it might be network or yeah hello i am amrish hi able to hear me now yeah go ahead hello yeah go ahead guys yeah, i have i have eight years of experience in pls sql okay good amrish and pls sql in eight years okay chari i think chari went for a break Okay, Gaurav. I think he's. Oh. Yeah, Gaurav, go ahead. Yeah, uh, myself Gaurav, and I have I have total eight year experience, and I am working in telecom com telecom company, and uh, I am currently working on Unix cell scripting and Python. Okay, very good. Nice technologies. Thank you. Next, uh, Natraj. Uh, even I know uh, Natraj very well. Natraj, go ahead and explain yourself for, for others. Okay, if Natraj is not available, Prashant. Okay, Radha. Don't feel shy to introduce yourself, guys. Rama, I know Rama. Sri, okay, it's time up. Just uh, let's continue. Or uh, fine. And anyway, I'll take the your introduction. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Shristi, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, all. Uh, it's me, uh, Shristi Verma, and I'm currently working with Accenture, and I have overall three years of experience. I uh, previously was working as a mainframe developer. Recently, my switched my skill to testing and Oracle. That's all from my end. Okay, fine, good. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I'll take uh, others' introduction later. Point of time. Let's move on. Let's continue on the Hadoop thing. Okay, what is Hadoop? Sorry, I don't know why it is stopped. okay so the data the data will be break into pieces this is our data and you want to store this data into hdfs you want to store this data into hdfs this data will be uh, this data will be break into pieces the beautiful data will be break into pieces by our client and uh, the pieces will call as a blocks the pieces will call as a blocks the pieces will call as a block the block then you have a hard disk right you have a hard disk how this is how hard disk looks correct how hard disk internally the data will store in the hard disk we will be having something called what are this what is this guys tracks these are tracks oh these are tracks and we will be having something is a cursor looks like a pizza right
this is how our hard disk looks uh, the plates I can say the layers right so whatever the data has been broken into pieces what your client will do the client will take this blocks and he will uh, he will give the block numbers guys unique numbers sequence numbers he will give and he will take this blocks this guy will start writing into the blocks into this bit in your hard disk your hard disk will be keep spinning okay he will start load into your pieces into this your pieces it can it's no need to be always sequence it can be anywhere in the disk anywhere in the disk okay this is will call track this straight line will call sector and this these are called blocks and how he will divide what is the size of the block in the local file system we know that is a 4 KB and the, uh, I mean Linux in a Linux machine is a 4 KB very small block in other file systems we have a different kind of file systems uh, Windows or uh, Mac are different kind of file system their block size may, may be different but it will be in a KBs only it won't be more than that it will be in a KBs only okay the blocks will be stored here and there in the hard disk okay this is how now the way in the hard disk where they have stored where they have stored which sector which point they have stored someone has to maintain that in reference someone has to maintain that reference yes or no guys that is maintaining by your file system that is maintaining by your file system sorry one second guys that is maintaining by your file system you will be having a file system layer you will be having a file system layer one second uh, you'll be having a file system layer this file system maintain the references maintain the references block a uh, file one is broken into block one to block hundred block 100 is there in some location block 2 is there some location block 3 is there some location and so on the reference will be maintained by a file system who will make use of this file system your operating system your operating system will be keep interact with this guy for the files to get to read the data to write the data this is how the data will be stored in the hard disk guys the data will write in the sequential manner block one next to block two next to block three one by one block by block it will write and even it's reading also block by block only don't think that the whole data is going to load at a time and the whole data is coming reading that's our what we see that but internally this is how the data loads internally this is how the data loads it will write the block by block and each block will have a sequence number and the the, uh, the, the, the the while reading also it will read from the sequence number only okay this is the file system this is the file system then what is the problem here we already have a file system why we need a Hadoop file system already we have a file system then why we need a Hadoop file system let's look at the limitations here let's look at the limitations size of the file is the first limitation why size of the file why size of the file because let's assume that I have a 100 MB file or let's take a or let's take a 100 MB file let's take a 100 MB file 100 MB how many KBs how many KBs I want to convert into I mean I need to count how many blocks how many four blocks will come Yes, no guys four ones are four two fifty six how many guys so it means for 100 MB data these many blocks are get created right and every time the data will while 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 reading the data it will read block by block for every seek it has to bring one one block and we have something called data transfer rate data transfer rate uh, from the disk 
data transfer rate from the disk is 100 MB PS 100 MB per PS this is the data transfer rate this is the data transfer rate and we are reading only 4 KB in a single seek it means from this channel I'm passing only 4 KB to make you understand I'm drawing like this guys so you have a bandwidth of 100 Mbps but we are transferring 4 KB does it mean are we using complete bandwidth no it means I have a big tunnel I have a big tunnel I'm passing less number of water in this very small no flow of water if you want to make use of the hundred percent of this if you want to make use of the hundred percent of this I need to send a bigger flow I need to send a bigger flow this right it means it means you are not utilizing your bandwidth to process this hundred MB you have to do these many six these many six that is called seek time Seek time is more. The seeking time is more. You are reading so many seeks. You are reading so many blogs. You are reading a lot of blogs. And you are processing. So it here is the first limitation is the processing time. The processing time. Understand guys? We are not really utilizing. We are not really. It is not really fast. It's not really fast right and also another limitation is we do not have automatic replica there is no automatic backup it's actually no auto backup suppose i'm storing the data into one drive uh, one disk or one location there won't be duplicate copy in other disk there is no automatic it's not it's not automatic okay there are other fault to tolerant and all those things comes into picture we'll talk about that later is this clear to everyone file system is that clear to everyone the file system yes no guys quickly we have a very less time to you know discuss about how to i mean uh, uh discuss about other other parts please respond quickly is it clear to everyone any doubts good now this is the this is the this is about the file system and let's talk about a distributed file system let's talk about next word is distributed it means distributed file system one second guys my laptop is running out of power i'll just switch it on I had done it. Okay, distributed file system. Any example for distributed file systems, guys? Any example for the distributed file system? Any example for the distributed file system? An existing example, I mean, existing distributed file system. Do you guys anyone have come across the files? Anyone does anyone come across the file systems? Does anyone come across the file system distributed file system? Anyone? Okay, fine. Anyway, we will see that, guys. Okay, not to worry. Uh, let me see a chart message. Anyone is pinged anything? Shared location. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yes, uh, Syed, right? Soup. Yeah, yeah, soup. Correct. I'm coming to that. Okay, let's look at, guys, what is a distributed file system? Facebook is a distributed file system. It's not a file system, it's a web application. But Facebook is a web application, it's not a distributed file system. 
okay it is not a file system those are not file systems uh, rishi amazon amazon has a distributed file system maybe that has a different component amazon is not a distributed file system facebook is not a distributed file system those are all web applications they are all just in web applications okay yeah fine so let me show you what is a distributed file system distributed file system means it's a, it's a file system like a network file system they use hdfs hdfs is a distributed file system hdfs is a distributed file system but amazon and facebook or google the, those are not distributed files they use distributed file system i said example of distributed file system okay anyway we will we'll talk about that rishi network file system you guys might have uh, heard about the network file system a shared location as subset that is a distributed file system network file system nfs this is a distributed file system you might have heard about the dfs distributed file system those are all examples okay dfs not b it's a d typo distributed file system okay how this will work so we will be having a multiple missions we will be having a multiple missions we will store the data into multiple missions let's assume that in the mission one i have uh, uh, something called uh, mm, let's take a same example employee data i have something called student data okay let's take a different example guys i want to take it. i have some india data here i have a business across the multi uh, multi uh, countries i have india data i have uk uh, servers so there are different different missions there are different different servers who stores the data in it and i have us i have uh, canada whatever it is and uh, being a client uh, being a client i want to process the data actually uh, it maintains something called uh, uh, storage area network storage area network we will talk about that later this is actually storage area network it will talk to the storage area network and it will talk like this i mean he, he will he will interact after that so we will see this thing later point of time so for timing you just understand uh, I'm a client a client want to process the data if it is not a distributed if it is not a distributed what is a problem so I'm uh, being a client I have to log into the server I need to lo uh, launch my job I need to process it I need to uh, I mean while while logging into this I need to enter the credentials also right so I have to process I do it it after completing this I will log into this machine with my credentials I'll do that after that again I log into this machine uh with my credentials i'll do that I, after that i will log into these machines i have to process all those things it means i log into first this 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 independently with the independent uh, credentials right i need to log in multiple times if i have a four countries fine if i have a 50 50 times i need to log in right so it means uh, what, what i'm trying to show you here is when you say if, if it is not a distributed it's like a single man show like one person is started building a house it's, it's, uh, one person started building a house if it is a distributed multiple people can participate each other they can you know, coordinate each other they can do that right that is a distributed so we'll see that what is a fully distributed and non uh, normal distributed also okay this is non distributed if it is not non distributed you have to log into each mission individually you have to log into each mission individually okay so what is the problem you have to log in multiple times you have to enter the credentials multiple times you have to you know it may take so much of time to complete it right so instead of that instead of that what we what <clears throat> instead of that what we do we will have some server a network server we'll have a network server what this guy will do like this they will create one layer that network server all these missions will be connected to that network server all these server all this all this missions will be connected to the network server and all they start sharing the data to look this shared location this is called this is called dfs phase or net nfs dfs or nfs and the client need to connect to 
the client need to connect to you really no need to connect to all the machines you really no need to connect to all the machines you just need to connect the server or this layer and whoever started sharing the data this already available here you can you can see the india data in this layer you can see uk data here you can say us data here you can say canada data here in the single single login it means the client feels that okay all data is looks like a, in a single hard disk a simple example guys we have a shared drives in our office shared drives right what we do we will start share uh, we'll start share the data into the drive whoever log into that machine they see all the data is available in a single location is the really the data is available in the single location no the data actually available in your machine right so but as soon as you log into the shared location you feel that oh th all the data is available in that location it's just a share right so it's called network file system nfs network file system we already using this in our day to day life in our offices right so we already have a network file system then why we need a hadoop distributed file system why we need a hadoop distributed file system we already have a distributed file system in a, in the form of nfs why we need a hadoop distributed file system very simple guys again here the same limitations again the same limitations are uh, the single point of failure let's say uh, i'm processing the india data and india data machine is corrupted there is no other job to launch i mean fault to tolerant there is no other mission to you know, who, who can handle india data and again the block size is 4 kb here there is no backup automatic backup there is no automatic replica right there is no automatic replica if uh, india machine is down you cannot process the india data right so you, you have similar kind of limitations with the this, this distributed file system also you know parallel process there is no parallel process there is no data locality right and sequential process so if it is not a parallel process there is sequential process only right so these are the limitations with the distributed file system and file system that is the reason we need a special kind of file system to handle a big data to achieve the better performance we need a special kind of file system that special kind of file system is called hadoop distributed file system hdfs that is hdfs okay let me save this file i hope you guys understand the file system and distributed file system any question so far i'm going to show you uh, hadoop distributed file system i'm going to show you hadoop distributed file system this is the file system and this is hadoop distributed file system oh, sorry normal distributed file system any questions so far any questions sandeep sayed umang shah vishal natraj yeah sub sri rama any questions guys yeah good guys so let's move let's move to the next page i mean uh, i'm going to open one more uh, ms paint i think this now we are going to talk about here distributed file system how do distributed file system hadoop distributed file system hdfs hdfs what is the hadoop distributed file system how it will work how it will work okay let's look at let me explain this how it will work hadoop distributed file system also a distributed file system 
to create a hadoop distributed file system <clears throat> we need a two type of machines <clears throat> two type of machines not two machines not two machines two type of machines two type of machines what are they one is the master type machine one is the master type machine other one is slave type machine master type machine will call a master machine a master node and the slave type machine will call a slave machine or or a slave node we, it has a specific a special uh, specific name for these machines i'll tell that names And the master machine or master node will call a node okay what is the node guys i think a new terminology node what is a node it's a machine it's a root it's a root it's a machine okay anyone else a node is one unit of an integrated system which has got more than one unit okay network with each other okay connection point and things okay a node is a physical machine a node is a physical machine who actually node is a physical machine who who connected uh, i mean who actually participated in the network and who connected from that machine to another machine i mean who connects to edges i can say let's assume that my my machine is there in the network from my i mean my machine is connected to uh, my machine is connected to network and from my machine there will be one more machine may be connected right or from my machine is my machine connected to one router right through wire or through wifi whatever it is right who connects the network or who is a physical machine who participate in the network who connects the two edges and who who takes the request and who who gives you a response like a physical machine which is there in the network we can call them as a node very simple terms okay yes you guys also said uh, no the answers are correct it doesn't mean that those are not correct those are also correct a physical machine who connects uh, who participating in the network and who who who, uh, who giving the service and here the master machine will call as a master node that master node we can call it as the master node we can call it as is it, in the hadoop will call as a name node there is a specific reason to call as a name node why to call as a name node why can't we call as a hadoop node or why can't we call as a ravi node or why can't we call as an atrash node so why they are calling as a name node there is a specific reason for it there is a specific reason for it and the slave machines they will call as the data nodes slave machine they will call as the data nodes okay uh, here this guy is like a manager in our team and these machines are like a uh, team members like we like we uh, a manager only maintains these machines and this all machines will be connected together they are commodity hardware we no need to really go need to go for a uh, dedicated hardware we can go with the commodity hardware commodity hardware means cheaper hardware right we really not require the dedicated hardware and all are connected all are communicate each other they communicate through they communicate through there is a protocol called rpc rpc remote procedure call remote processor call they will talk each other by using remote processor call all your data nodes will talk to a name node every 3 seconds every 3 seconds which is a configurable guys which is a configurable the values are configurable in hadoop each most of the values are configurable we can change the values you don't like to be 3 seconds you want to 10 seconds you can go ahead and change it so every 3 seconds your data node will be communicating to the name node all your data nodes will be communicating to our name, name node if any one of the data node is not send a heartbeat or it not send a signal to a name node within a 10 seconds it means three consecutive signals if your data node is not send the three consecutive signals consecutive signals to a name node that machine will be treated as a dead or out of network that machine will be treated as a dead or out of network and that that references will be maintaining by your master your name node your manager your manager is responsible for managing all these data nodes 
right who will take the status of uh, our work right our manager similarly here the why we will call is a data nodes who actually stores the data in it actually stores the data your name node will not store the data apart from the metadata apart from metadata metadata means the references of the actual data let's assume that i have amazon log file let's assume that i have amazon log file here or any log file not only amazon you can take any log file I have some log file this log file I want to process the size of this log file let's assume the 10 GB it's a 10 GB file I want to load this file and I want to do actual this Amazon log file will store in this machines parts parts will be stored in this machines and the references which part is there where the references will be loaded into here the references will be maintained by here and actual if you see the real-time uh, neuron mint you will be having one more mission here gold uh, uh, sorry can you can you repeat this part uh, it went over my head uh, I will, so you have an amazon log file which is 10 gb I'll, then what you do yeah when we load this amazon file when i want to store this amazon, amazon file into hadoop when we want to load this amazon file into hadoop we we have a script or we will be having a commands when we are loading it the parts of the data the whole data will not go into single mission i'll, I'll show you that parts okay uh, it's really you know, re too advanced to explain that the actual data will store into these machines data nodes these machines these machines the data will store the references where which part is stored where will be there in this machine oh the chunks okay exactly we'll call as a blocks a chunks we'll talk about that later we're not at uh, no computers how this okay now you will be having one more component called a client you can call it as a client node you can call as a client node or you can call edge node edge node or you can call as a gateway node there are multiple nodes there are multiple nodes one is a gateway node name node data node secondary name node there are different different names for it okay there are some architecture changes that we will see in the tomorrow session or tomorrow session will be continuation from here tomorrow session is the most most important please don't miss it okay so uh, uh, tomorrow session will be we'll be talking about how the data will load into hadoop how the data will be processed into hadoop how the data will load how the data will get processed how it will be chunked everything we'll talk in the tomorrow session I recommend you to strongly I strongly recommend you to please attend the tomorrow session don't miss it and uh, this node is as a being a developer or as being a developer we really will not be having access directly to our name node we will be having access to one gateway node from the gateway node we will talk to a name node and we will submit the jobs this is how we do that anyway we'll talk about that in the uh, tomorrow session so before winding up a session uh, uh, if you guys have any questions please ask me uh yeah I, I i can do that uh i can do that uh, uh chari but the problem is uh, i have another session now so i need to continue there so here before winding up uh here uh, my name is let me introduce myself again name is Vira. okay my mobile number is Okay, uh, the, actually my mobile is stopped working uh, since yesterday. Uh, so I have, uh, I mean, I'm using the WhatsApp in some other mobile. So you guys can, this is my personal number. The same number only I'll be used for all the even uh, calls and WhatsApp as well. At, at least only today. So I'm going to take my mobile to the service center to get it service. Uh, till the time I may not able to receive the calls. But I'll try to keep it in some other mobile. I can, I can try to make it uh, receive the calls. And my YouTube channel, uh, as you guys are aware that I have a YouTube channel. For more details and more videos, you can uh, go to YouTube. It is a Hadoop Mentor. Okay, you guys can visit and you can okay, have a look. And tomorrow, same time, 7 to 9. And uh, 
uh, the the session will be continued tomorrow we'll be seeing uh, architecture changes and tomorrow we'll be seeing how to write the data how to achieve the fault to tolerant and tomorrow we are going to see how to avoid the limitations of the traditional approach this is what we are, we are going to see tomorrow sorry hi veera hey, hi yeah. Just, yeah. will you be providing all the recording sessions also yes i will be providing all the recording sessions yes okay okay uh, this is about uh, today's session uh, actually i thought to cover at least to complete this you uh, know hadoop explanation today but since we are already you uh, know uh, late um, tomorrow we will be continuing from here uh, if it's possible tomorrow i can extend uh, uh, 15 to uh, now for now time is it clear to everyone yeah any doubts hardware so it is a cheap hardware but uh, like data node as you said like it is storing uh, the actual data hmm. so uh, actual data is like huge data right so i mean how exactly uh, it is managed with uh, just cheap hardware and in what sense it is cheap actually okay very good question okay so uh, uh, the cheap in this it's a sense of the cheap means it's in the cost okay one is the cost we really not require the super computers for you know data nodes or uh, and coming to uh, storage capacity like you can go with a 1 tb 2 tb based on your data size and coming to a processor uh, you can go with um, uh, 32 gb ram or 64 gb ram you know you can go with those the cheap the, the respect to uh, the cost uh, the machines will be available in uh, all the uh, vendors like a hp dell uh, you can get it from them if you are, if you go with rdbms we really require a dedicated server so each server will be you know uh, i mean i as i know that they are very dedicated and they they are very uh, costly servers we really not to go uh, require for a hadoop cluster you can go with a commodity hardware even my laptop my laptop configuration is uh, uh, 8 core and um, uh, it is um, uh, 16 gb ram and it is a 1 tb hard disk where i can go and connect my hard disk i mean my machine into a hadoop cluster uh, where where i can make my mission as a name no uh, data node it means my mission is a uh, uh, very cheap mission right with respect to industry yes no so that's a commodity hardware i will explain that also right uh, what is the commodity hardware what is the cost of it and all those things we'll be talking yeah, go with the next question yeah sure. uh, the question we asked me the huge data we are going to load in this how how we can manage the commodity hardware so that is the reason we are going with the uh, replication factor uh, do you uh, I think you might have remember the replication factor we're maintaining the three copies by default three copies mm -hmm. the whole data this 10 GB data when it moved to the Hadoop at the mm -hmm. end it will become 30 GB data even though any one of the mission goes down we really not to worry the data will be available in any one of the other mission mm -hmm. okay and uh, its client will be always communicating with the name node right so it will never interact with data node it will directly will not interact with the uh, uh, data node he will interact with the name node and he will take the references to whom and all here he can talk then he will talk he cannot directly talk okay. to the without the talking to the very simple uh, so uh, let's say a new client came apple uh, apple client came okay to your project mm -hmm. and he he directly talked to you or first you will talk to your manager manager mm -hmm. then then only he will take uh, our references who can work on that uh, pro project or that who can work on that uh, defect or bug then only he will talk mm -hmm. to us right that way mm -hmm. Okay, so now if if a data node go, uh, goes down, this will be the last question. If a data node goes down, as you said, like name node will be taking the uh, responsibility. I mean, yes. whatever it used to store. So, uh, but data node is supposed to be larger than name node. Uh, I mean, disk space wise or something. It can so be. How exactly? It it can, or, be, it can be. Okay. It can so be. So can it accommodate? Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. So now, if like two data nodes are down, so will it be able to accommodate those two data nodes' uh, data uh, within itself? No, it will not store in the name node. Okay, uh, try to understand uh, this one yeah. very clearly. Your name node will not store any data related to Amazon data. It will not store anything. It will just store an inform metadata information. Let me put it in okay. in this way. Okay, uh, I think it's for no problem. Uh, let's assume uh, soup. Okay. Uh, uh, you found some gold mine okay you found some gold mine or you got some gold okay 
then the gold you have divided into three parts you, you don't like to keep in everything in a single place because uh, you know that uh, uh, if anyone start uh, uh, robbing it uh, they can take a complete gold so what you decided uh, you, you break into three pieces and uh, what you did uh, you have kept into three different missions okay i mean three uh, three different locations i mean to say three different locations okay uh, and what you did uh, the locations you may forget right so what you did you uh, you take that location information the location one okay part one part one of the gold part one is there in some some location some address part two some address part three some address this part information is there no the information what you have written in the piece of paper that is a metadata that you have put into some other location okay wow. now the some other location is not actually storing the gold it is just storing the references of actual locations correct no. yeah. so your name node also same the name node will not actually stores the gold it will stores the references of where the gold is resides i mean gold whatever okay. It is. okay okay so if one data node is down then uh, it will be having that uh, replication details or something and it will exactly. point to some other data node okay. exactly while it is processing yeah. it can go on doing it from this. Uh, yeah, that will be get, yeah that will be get clear tomorrow session that's why i tell uh, tomorrow session is most important okay okay i think a couple of questions are there in the chat window let me read out uh, one second guys uh, one second let me make it uh, bigger uh Okay, Umang saw uh, this video is uploaded on you, your YouTube channel. Yes, I, it will be the video will be uploaded in the YouTube channel, and I miss one uh, starting point today from this. Okay, uh, that can be shared in the YouTube. We can look at uh, the uh, the video Umang. The second one, every Hadoop also drawback, right? Even Hadoop has a, a drawback, uh, right? In case of master node is down, then uh, how business will survive? Very good question, uh, Chari, but the drawback is not there. The drawback has been already um, uh, rectified with a different uh, uh, architecture. That's what we are going to talk tomorrow. And uh, we are okay with the data nodes, commodity hardware, and cheaper. Again, we need to set up a backup for a master node. Uh, please, click. yeah, that's what I'm I'm telling you, Chari. Tomorrow we are going to see this architecture changes. So yes, the name node is a single point of failure here. Uh, if name node goes down. We cannot do uh, any interaction with the cluster. Why? Because the name node is the point of contact. So for that, we have something called. There are some other approaches. We'll call as a high availability, or we can call. Uh, we we call. We have some other approaches like a backup node and all those things. We will see that changes tomorrow. I mean that is architecture evaluation. So what I'm trying to show here is I'm not showing you current architecture. I'm showing you very old architecture. How it has been? What was the limitations with the old architecture? Then what the how they solved? And what was the limitation with that architecture? How they solved? It means version wise, version wise, I'm going to uh, show you the differences. That's where I someone asked me yesterday in the chat, uh, saying that what is the differences between the Hadoop one and the Hadoop two? That's what I'm going to talk tomorrow. That's the most important tomorrow session. Is that okay, Chari? Uh, what level of Java knowledge is required? I'm poor in Java. Very good question, Chari. Uh, the int, uh, I can say core Java knowledge is really important. Core Java knowledge is really important. The complete core Java will be covered as part of our training. So whatever is required, not only is whatever is required, the pure, pure, complete Java part is going to cover as part of this course, uh, uh, which will help you a lot in the Java part. Yeah, Umang. Yes. That's uh, that, that I will take care of uh, Java part, but I need a commitment from your side. You guys should do hands on. You guys should follow the things what I'm teaching. So if you are doing that, no, obviously you'll get, you'll learn the things easily. It's, it's really no, no, not tough job. Any other questions? Yeah. So will there be any assignment in the this uh, course uh, every day or every week or something? Uh, in the day to in the day to day life, we will be doing a hands on. The day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. will be doing a hands-on, and I'll be giving you assignments in the each every day. Not in the setup. So really, setup is set, setup assignment is not really required. But if you want, you can do it. I'll I'll tell you how to do it. 
Oh, but the commands, okay. execution, job launches, job executions, and all is really will be doing assignments. Assignments since every day I'll tell you this is the assignment for you. You have to do it and come come with it tomorrow. So I'll be verifying that. I'll be verifying with one or two. I, mean, I cannot verify with everyone. I will verify with one or two people. And if I, I if I feel uh, they are in the right way, then uh, I will explain that this is how it it needs to be. So how long this course continue? Number of days and number of hours you see. Yeah, Chari, uh, the course uh, fee. Okay, uh, these things we can talk in offline. Okay, uh, but I can tell you the the course duration. The course will contain Hadoop and Spark, uh, which contains the Hadoop and Spark. Uh, uh, as of now, I'm I have kept the target of uh, uh, three end of months to four months. So let me sh uh, let me show you the uh, let me show you the what are the things I'm going to cover as part of this course. Uh, uh, which I have missed uh, in the uh, introduction of it. Uh, let me let me explain here what I'm going to cover as part of this course. As part of this course, I'm going to explain. No, on weekdays, every day. Okay, uh, I'll tell you Charlie that things. So uh, we'll be seeing uh, all these things like uh, Hadoop and all the I mean uh, big data and all those things. Uh, HDFS, Java, MapReduce. Hive, Scoop, Pig, HBase, Flume, Woozy, AWS Introduction, Cloud Intro. I mean, Cloud Introduction. Uh, here we'll be seeing S3, EMR, EC2, and uh, one two three in the Hadoop stack. I have covered all the things. I didn't miss anything. I hope yeah. And Scala for Spark, Core, SQL, Streaming. Here before streaming, Kafka, Kafka. Here Kafka. And uh, it's possible I'll be covering a Cassandra as one database. Cassandra. Okay. Uh, let me check. Is there anything is missing? HDFS, Java, MapReduce, Hypex, Scoop, HPS, Flow, Mozi. Okay. And also, uh, I will explain the projects. Uh, Interview questions. Assignment will be there. I mean, these are all extra. These are all extra. I can say. And along with this, I'm also planning to explain one search engine, Solar. Solar. Okay. So this is this. These are the course content. Uh, that's the reason I'm you know I'm really uh, t uh, you know, uh, openly saying that. I mean, I can say uh, it takes more than three and a half months to four months. It really take that much time. It's not like a 45 days or it's not like a 60 days to complete the whole course. I'm taking whole course into a four months time. It's really take take the job. Okay, so yeah, hi, Sushi, go ahead. Uh, so, so coding wise, how much Java knowledge is needed? I mean, uh, I don't have a uh, basic knowledge of Java. So. Uh, that's what I'll teach you the Java in this uh, uh, part of this course, uh, Sushi. Uh, we need uh, uh, intermediate level knowledge. I can say you should have uh, aware of the object uh, whoops. And you should have uh, collections. You should have uh, exceptions and strings. There are some parts. Everything I'll be covered. I'll make sure that you guys will learn it. Clear? Yeah. Any other doubts? The fees. Uh, fees. What are the fee structure? Uh, that we'll talk on offline uh, side. I really, uh, I didn't. I really didn't feel it's a good to talk here. You can give me a call or you can WhatsApp me a message. We can have a talk. Yeah, Deepak. Hello. Uh, 